All right, this is a lesson about interpreting diagrams. Uh, on this lesson, what you're going to see is uh, what you can actually assume to be true and uh, things that you maybe cannot assume to be true on diagrams. Uh, now, really quick, I do want to talk about whether G is parallel to F and what that means. Now, they're labeling the lines here using simply the lowercase la letter um, that they've identified the line by. So you have lines G, F, and E. And whether G is parallel, that's what the two vertical bars indicate, parallel to F, is actually going to be true. They gave us that information in the way of these arrows. When you see these arrows, uh, that means that they are parallel. They could have used one pair of arrows, or in this case, they used two pairs of arrows. Uh, to indicate this pair of lines are actually parallel. So this actually is given enough information by the diagram to know that that's true. I do want to point out that another way of writing this statement would have been that instead of line G, we could have called that line ST or TS is parallel to line, and I should have arrows on the end of those bars. Uh, we could have called line F instead line QR. Now I do want to go through the other things that we could safely assume on this diagram. Um, things that we can assume. We could assume that angle QRS, this angle right here, is congruent to angle TSR. They are marked as such. based off of what they've marked. And we could also s assume that line QP, or segment QP, is perpendicular to line E. These are all things that we can assume by the information that they've told us. There's actually other things that we would actually know to be true, um, pot potentially, but we're only talking today on this lesson about things that they've marked on the diagram. All right, on the second problem, uh, we have been given quite a bit of information, actually. Um, we, could at, we are asked if segment DF is congruent to segment CD. Now, first of all, I am going to notice that uh, they have not marked any of the segments as being equal. Uh, you'll see in a minute what that may look like. But segment DF has not even shown, but it would be right here. And we're comparing it to segment CD which is this segment right here. Uh, clearly, these two segments don't appear to be equal, and we wouldn't know that based off of what they've shown in the diagram since they've not shown us tick marks. Now, things we would know. We knew, would know that uh, line DB is parallel to line FE because of these arrow indicators. We would also know these two angles are congruent, so angle CDB is congruent to angle CBD. And we would have even another pair of angles be congruent right here, the, these base angles, which are angles uh, EFG, would be congruent. Uh, and we could have called this just simply angle G. Now, why did I just use one letter for this one? Well, there's only one angle located at point G, so you can actually just shorten down how you're naming the angle, as such as I did. Okay, now um, they've shown us two pieces of uh, information on example three. Uh, so the difference here, and like on your assignment, you're going to have uh, problems where you're just saying whether you can assume or whether you cannot, like you saw in the first two examples. Now you're going to be expected to come up with things that are true. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look. Um, here, they have actually shown segments are equal. They are doing this with these little tick marks here on the segments. Let's go ahead and name those congruent segments. So we actually have segment BQ. And they might use to call it QB instead. Is congruent to segment PF. or FP. Uh, the order doesn't matter the letters, but they would be using those letters to indicate those segments. 
Now, uh, the other piece of information that they're showing are on these angles being congruent. Three marks and three marks indicate that these are congruent angles. If one had two marks and the other had three marks, you would not be saying that they're congruent. So since they have the same number of marks, that actually makes a difference. So I'm going to say the angle CAD is congruent to angle DAE. Now, the order does matter a bit here when you're naming angles. I could have named uh, angle CAD instead angle DAC, but I do have to have A, the vertex, be the middle letter when I'm naming the angle. All right, there, those are the two pieces of information I would have gotten from this. Now, there is actually a third piece that I'm going to hit on really quick, um, so it's a bit more advanced. Um, and this would be saying that simply that ray AD bisects angle CA. E. So if you consider the larger angle formed here, angle CAE is bisected by ray AD. But that's something that maybe you wouldn't uh, be listing in the choices. Okay, now on this last problem, um, I'm going to go ahead and point out that there are no congruent segments or parallel segments shown on this one. Um, what we are going to have are a pair of congruent angles here and here. Now, since this is the only angle that happens at point V, I could actually just call this angle V. So I'm going to say angle V is congruent to angle Y. Um, now, just adjust to what they might be doing on your multiple choices. Perhaps they call this angle ZYX or angle XYZ, and that would be fine. You just have to adjust to what you're seeing. All right, that's one piece of information that we know. Now, for the other piece of information uh, that they're demonstrating here, there's two different ways that it could be written. Uh, you could say um, that segment WX or XW is perpendicular to segment, uh, maybe you call this segment XY, you could call it YV, whatever. Um, as long as you're using two of the th three letters that are involved on it. VX, something like that. So segment VX. Now as an alternative, I just want to point out that you could also be, have this um, written in a different way. Maybe you write down that the measure of angle WXY equals 90 degrees. I'm um, just introducing this as a different approach. Uh, the lowercase m indicates measure of an angle. Um, and you can see that I actually recognize that because of the box, that's what perpendicular means, that that angle is going to be 90 degrees. All right, if there are any issues, please let me know um, through email. And thank you very much. Good luck with it.